Hey guys, welcome to another video. This time I can finally say, due to popular demand, a Taoist companion tier list. It's, uh, like, it's absolutely going to be purely objective with no bias whatsoever. Like, uh, typical, right? Whoever could have bias for all these lovely, lovely people. Now, besides ranking them on my own thoughts, I will also look at the character lore in the game and see what description they have and whether they fit the category. As you may know, there are several categories like Hard Life or Brave and Fearless. And we'll just go through them. Now, in this case, we start with Ding Hai Tang. She is also in the Brave and Fearless category. And she's like helping her uncle with all kinds of matters. And because she grew up in the water village, she has a masculine air. Basically, some like masculine aura. To be honest, her quest line is kind of annoying. You can easily miss it. Then she joined rather late into like the game, like or rather she was recruitable at a later stage of the game. I don't really have any real memories with her. She at most was like a hot spring girl for the homestead. So maybe close, maybe friendly. Nothing really that makes me close to her, let's just say friendly. Next up we have Feng Xuanji, and yes, I know some Chinese, so I'll try to pronounce the names properly. But correct me if I mess some of them up. Now Feng Xuanji is obviously one of the four envoys of the Divine Fire Sect. Now, one thing that absolutely boosts her score is, if you've watched my other videos, I'm currently playing with a texture replacement mod. It's called Test Replace FA on the Steam Workshop if you're interested. And it turns the pixel art into AI generated art. And I absolutely adore her art. Purely due to her art style, I'll try to show an image of her right now, how she looks in a game with that mod. Love it. Now, besides that, she in the game actually like the storyline tries to personify a like strong woman she got captured at first like as a mate it seems yeah exactly by the divine fire guy then trained her way up became one of the envoys then managed to well convince other people to help her out and then essentially started coup d'etat and forced the Divine Fire Sect leader out of his uh, cultivation, seclusion, and then I'd assume, but this is pure headcanon, took over parts of the sect after they are destroyed. In fact, if you play the DLC 1, the story mode, she has a specific storyline in there as well, where she, after, like, the storyline only happens after the Divine Fire Sect is destroyed, where she takes over parts of the area and creates her own organization and she's using it as a bargaining chip in order to become a let's say like subordinate of yours like basically she's trying to uh, attain a high position in your strong sect and in order to do so she cultivated her own power next up we have Fu Yao Chin I have to search for her in the law. She's head of a family with an alluring beauty. Now let's talk about like her character. She is very obsessed. Like, uh, if you've noticed it all revolves around the old demon and she's basically trying to catch up to him as she feels that he's looking down on her and obviously she had a major crush on him. Besides that, in the plot, we do at some point bathe with her, which does give a good, good amount of XP, even like constitution XP and so on. And I guess it fulfills the fetish of several people on the Discord. But I find it kind of underwhelming with her. The worst part about her is 
In particular, she wants only legendary cosmetic items and they are a pain to get. Furthermore, she has a trait which reduces the effectiveness of gifts and if you, for some reason, married Fuching beforehand, it's really hard to get her a relation anywhere near high enough to marry her. Like, after all, you need, I don't need, yeah, I think you do need 100 relation to marry. Pro gamer right here, in, uh, by the way. So it's like intimate at most. The reason why intimate is Gu Ching Chen, I do enjoy her. And well, she's like part of the trio with Yu Wei who is somewhere, I guess, down here, yeah. As such, intimate seems fine. She does help you a bit. It was also kind of cool when you went to uh, heal your master, like the old man, and you had some interactions, maybe tried to dodge her when she's bathing. I can live with intimate. Next up, Fu Ching. I don't know about her. The trait, uh, royal son-in-law, is both a blessing and a curse. On one hand, you get the first impression relationship, which can salvage lost runs, as it can grant up to plus 50 relation with an individual. You can also talk with some like random gods in a place with that trait to boost the relationship of that faction or that sect. Furthermore, then of course with princess allowance and so on, you get additional money per day, with the downside of heavily restricting the relationship gain from gifts to other members of this tier list. And I'm noticing, by the way, uh, this girl down here, the opera girl, is not actually a girl, it's a guy. So, okay. Um, <laughs> jokes aside. Like, Fuching, I don't know. Like, even her storyline, I don't really enjoy that much. I can't even understand parts of it. Like, after all, she was born in a royal household, grew up in there, and as such, she is this innocent. Like, to be honest, I don't understand it. Like, if you grew up in a place which is, like, full of intrigues and everything, everyone is scheming against themselves and others, how can you be innocent? Like, I even remember watching a... Chinese drama, I think Weaving a Tale of Love or something like that, and I had to drop it in like the first two episodes because the girl was extremely naive. She grew up in the same setting, an imperial palace. For some reason, like her a whole family was accused of treason, executed, but she survived. And even knowing this, knowing that if she expresses who she truly is, like who her family members are, she will die. She still was this extremely naive. And this is what Fu Ching basically signifies or symbolizes to me. And then the idea that she has Herculean strength. I guess it's cool, weak woman, but strong. Brings about some like Sakura or Tsunade vibes from Naruto. But no, I'm not the biggest fan. Now, if on the other hand, she had like some trait which is like double damage dealt or plus 10 strength to uh, like signify or this idea of Herculean or Amazonian strength sure but it's like plus two strength maybe if at all <laughs> then she's also like in the category of innocent children and now we know Sunbro and Choco from the discords this is like the favorite category this is where they are home but I try to distance myself from them. Which is why she's often like a workshop girl. <laughs> yeah. And yes, we can be friendly with her, but I try not to get too close. Next up, Gu Ching Chen. There is some Chinese saying of like a royal sister, like the elder royal sister, which is basically supposed to personify a very kind girl, like nice personality, kind, gentle, 
and she definitely fits this role. You can even see it in like the DLC 1 storyline where she's trying to soothe the pain of the refugee camp because they've experienced the whole like warfare and she's trying to let them calm down with her music. Then she also in a sense tries to keep herself pure which is I think a category exactly in the law, keep oneself pure. If you break into her boudoir she will actually commit suicide to well, keep herself pure. Then besides that, I just like the aura. Like how she's trying to play the Siva as well to calm the MC down. As such, we put her into inseparable. And as I mentioned, she's like the reason why Fuyo Chin is intimate and not like close. Next up we have Haitang Cho. I actually have to search for her in the lore. Hard life. Okay, that's fitting. Like from what I remember about her storyline, it was her father got killed by the Azure Guardian or Azure Envoy of the Holy Fire Sect. As such she took over the inn and somehow like tries to mingle and tangle with all the different factions powers at play and tries to survive and later and that's how you actually can bond her you have to take revenge for her now the one issue i do have with her is she's kind of irrelevant like we do have like multiple quest lines especially with feng shunji where hai tang Xiu asks you to send a letter to her then you have the gambling possibility. Furthermore, you are forced into the Chang'an Inn at the moment you enter the desert region as there's like a sandstorm and everything, so you have to interact with her. It's not like some other girls who are missable, but she, she didn't really stick around in my eyes. Especially with the fact that it's like almost like a damsel in distress. In DLC 1, Feng Xuanji at some point asks you to save her in the space story of the base game it's also like that that Feng Shunji asks you to save her and it's like sure uh, we can definitely do it play the hero to save the beauty but it feels like damsel in distress but nonetheless I'd say somewhere like close friendly maybe close the, the issue is no distinct feature about her. For example, Hua Xinyang, also an innkeeper like she, so there's like similarities between two, which makes them not as unique anymore. But Hua Xinyang is very early on, has an amazing fate rate and so on. And this is something Hai Tang Chu is missing. Next up, we have another brave and fearless girl, Han Hongyu. Like if you remember, she's like the head of the escort, tiger escort, but not an escort in the sense you may think, but escorting goods. And she's basically trying to build it up from scratch. And I really like this idea. Like this is the idea of like strong woman in the game. She's doing it on her own. She's even pressured by the other, I think, escorts. Like at some point in the moment you reach 1500 score with her, there's some like event where three other escorts try to pressure her into basically giving up on the business and allowing them to take over. And she's like openly going against them with your help. And I just like this idea. Furthermore, she has really good traits. If you ever looked at her, I think one of her traits is actually called Brave and Fearless, which revives her with one HP during battle like up to one time per battle really good trade even if it's just one hp it allows you to possibly fire off another move kill people in the story uh, like in the dlc one any form of revive is insane though i don't even know if she gets that trade in the dlc one then her other trade is like per male party member on the team she gets some like action speed and I think final damage percentage 
like I think scales up to like 25% final damage and I don't know how much action speed or oh, was it crit but really cool and really good of course the issue with her is uh, like in order to bond her you have to interact with the previous emperor so the one in the Yanyun camp and at that point she will learn of the fate of her like father and only then can you bond her and it's kind of problematic if you play as the Yanyun guys or now the nine faction sect because you can't do it like maybe there's some way like some slight room yeah it could be like you have some slight margin when you do the Yanjin route that you perhaps interact with him beforehand then afterwards he's executed could work otherwise you can't bond her and you can only recruit her which means no hot springs but looks fine to me next up we have our robin hood but bad hua ching ching she tries to steal from the rich to help the poor but fails miserably at it if you ever looked at her fame stat she's like fame 2 which is really low you can reach a higher fame stat in nameless village she uses daga which right we did not yet talk about the different martial arts of the already ranked taoist companions but well let's talk about her ones like daga daga is really bad same with feng shui and ji but she already wins due to her artwork which is not even base games or canon but uh, like i said purely objective tier list right here but to be honest she's like friendly at most i don't understand her like gimmick She's like, let's look at her lore, a female disciple, not highly regarded due to her mediocre talent. She always wants to prove her skills, but things often go against her wishes. It's the typical main character problem. If you have no skills, you can't really prove yourself. And then even the facts, like the opening scene, I get it. The opening scene was supposed to like bring you into this world, let you interact with some characters and Luo, Xian Xu and Hua Qingqing fighting is like a cool idea. But it feels very underwhelming that you don't have like any hole cards, any ace cards uh, in your sleeve to turn the tide around in the battle and both of you essentially become not really unconscious after all they were conscious but immobilized so friendly it is next up ji fuling the daughter of some imperial sensor with like a whole storyline in the dlc2 big downside already dlc2 is partially about her partially about the nine faction sect and if you go along with the nine faction sect you can have issues recruiting her or if you recruit her, you can mess up your ninth faction playthrough. And that's that's kind of annoying. Now next up, uh, she also has this like trope of, in this case, damaged heart meridian, cannot experience strong emotional, fluctu emotional fluctuations. If you knew how many times I already heard about such a trope, or like she cannot cry, she's allergic to tears or whatever, can't we just get like normal individuals but i get it like some people have some congenital deficiencies yeah can happen now one big downside what i really detest about her she looks sad in every single one of her portraits now sadly the portrait mod i'm talking about does not have portraits for her yet so i can only see the base ones but she looks sad in every single one of you them now obviously she's like a clear reference to i think long xiao nu like who's a character from legend of the condor heroes yeah i'd probably put her in like close uh yeah close now once more daggers why does every girl need to use daggers now the worst martial arts by far Furthermore, like if you ever look at her like fighting sprite, she is holding two swords 
and then her equipment is one singular dagger. Come on. Now her storyline, it's cool that you get some like more interactive storylines, how you can like challenge different people and this actually thinking about it does boost it up to intimate. It's cool how you can or like how she has to challenge Duke Chi to like get some more insights into what happened. She has some interaction with Fu Yao Chin, with Jian Chi and so on and that those like kinds of events do bring some life to the character. So I'd say like intimate. Next up, Zhang Zian. I actually have to look for her in the lore. Where is she? Um, I don't know. Medicine and poison come from the same source. Now, of course, big plus is she got some additional like side content with one of the last updates where you have some insights into like her master and what happened with the Jolly tribe and so on. But for some reason, I don't like her character. Like, I don't know if she just appears old or something, but not that interested in her like appearance, her style. Besides, the jolly exhibition was cool, especially the part where you like breed a goo and like poison, which is you take a hundred or a thousand different uh, venomous or poisonous creatures, put them inside like one gourd, and wait until the last one survives. But I don't know, not my cup of tea. Next up, Ling Mong Di. Don't ask me why she's in the brave and fearless category in the law. What is brave and fearless about her? How she like fearlessly sleeps and bravely snores? I don't know. Now obviously big downside of her is to bond her and recruit her you need to lose 15% of your max HP. Annoying. But if you actually now recruit her, she has amazing traits, like she can learn any manual, she gets double uh, external stats from manuals, so like uh, People's Palm will give 74 to all like fist, sword, plate, skills, etc. A top quality People's Palm will give 110, like that's really cool. It makes for a character who you can build up to be very strong. So if you'd ever do a like woman only playthrough, she's definitely one of the top picks. Mm. Yeah. Like her law her law does not provide any more insights. And yeah. But don't ask why she's brave and fearless. Now next up another brave and fearless character. And by the way, the whole category in law, Brave and Fearless, has eleven characters. All of which are women. Now Lo Xianxu. She has idolized her brother since childhood, hopes to become a famous detective like him one day. I will actually put her at like maybe intimate or like high close simply due to DLC 1. In DLC 1, if you play the story mode early on, you choose either Lo Xianxu or Hua Qingqing to help you out with your sect. And Lo Xianxu wins every single time. It's not even close. Hua Qingqing is so bad in comparison. Furthermore, Lo Xianxu is like a sword user. Sword is a good martial art. In DLC 1, it's even better because it has a lot of different healing moves. I think Mortal Sword and then some other Saint Sword, which is like 10% of lost HP recovery. The other is like 100 HP per enemy hit. Then you combine it with the Reckless Sky internal technique for 15% of lost HP healed after every move. She becomes an incredible tank. And this does boost my opinion of her. Mm. Yeah, I'm have to drink something. Mm. Now, in comparison to like Hua Qingqing, I like her idea of 
I say morals and integrity a lot more. How oh, she's actually trying to pursue it. You can even see it like in the Nine Faction playthrough, as she's like trash talking you. And she's the only one who actually becomes hostile towards you. At least that was the case in my playthrough, which is why I had to then go to the Lin Lang Temple guy and remedy that. And it feels like weird that other people did not become completely hostile. Now, is she brave and fearless? I guess partially. Like, she's trying to enforce the law, and to do so, you have to be brave and fearless. Will it work out every time? Definitely not. But I do enjoy this idea. Next up, Mantolo, just put her known. I don't even know about her character. Some exotic dancer from probably Persia, and she's the damsel in distress, number one. Like, let's look at the description. Mysterious dancer from the western region with unparalleled beauty. Disappointed with the man in the world, she chose to live in Snowfall, uh, Snowflower Valley. And she's in the category, keep oneself pure. I don't know. Like, her interaction is quite boring as well. I know before the game came out, so in early access, there was some other storyline with her where you first went to the maiden house and then afterwards into um, Snowflower Valley and there was some like cheating guy and so on but this got cut from the base game when the game came out besides that she does not have any real story like you go up to her a battle starts then a general will come up a battle starts and that's it and then to recruit her, you need 80 trustworthiness. It's a bit annoying to get up, but uh, sure, we can do it. Just spam some random missions at a job board. And then obviously, if you bond her, if she's like the first girl you bond, she gets an ultimate or like a fate trade or a fate move, whatever it may be. And that's it. No special raids, no like special lore. She does tell you about the location of the five goddess orbs. Yes, she does. Ling Mung Di, however, also does so. So another reason why Ling Mung Di is superior to her. And that's it. Now she does have a hilarious sounding uh, trade, which is like servant under the skirt. So it's supposed to be like a debuff for all the guys around, how they are like servants under her skirt. But ma, I can live without her. Now, obviously, next up, Saidi. We are min maxers over here on this channel. Purely have an event of giving you plus 20 and minus 10 in like the different stats. Amazing, 10 out of 10. Inseparable, absolutely. And besides that, like her character. Huh? Bit underage, so move her down again, but nah, it's too OP for min maxing. I, you can never pass up this opportunity. You lose like a slight amount of HP, but who cares? Who cares when your splash damage is already dealing damage cap damage against the ship of sect leader? Who cares about HP at that point? Now, something of course we do enjoy is. You get the poison dragon egg as well from like her and the jolly tribe and being immune to poison for free is quite nice we do wish it's i i don't even know if they fix the bug can you still obtain multiple poison dragon eggs like a multiple as in more than two previously there was the case where you could recruit the chameleon lizard whatever it may be Heteromorphic lizard, I think. Recruit him, let him be killed by some other guys while he's in the party and he will drop an additional egg. So you could like basically make your whole party immune. It's also really cool that it counteracts arsenic. We just wish it would affect the Yanyun ending. So if you like help the Yanyun army all the way through, you will be offered like a poisonous cup of wine unless the guy likes you very very much now if 
the freaking poison egg could negate this poisonous wine 10 out of 10 like even better but yeah me outside he definitely gonna be a inseparable so as Chu Wang Yo immediately put her into S again really like her like archetype of being a healer but she's faced with the issue that she like has some disease that she cannot cure herself furthermore she's using swords as a martial arts a big fan of like this idea of like sword fairy sword lady she's even holding like an umbrella as a, let's say accessory of course it's uh, supposed to be there this umbrella to protect her from the sun she in like the game um, helps you with like every medical event there is like she can solve every one of them and has really cool dialogue like you can bring her to the different places like the beast man or quest line where it's like the plant house she has like some additional dialogue there when you heal kong yi dao with her she has some additional cool dialogue right there and she's really easy to recruit even early on now with the nine faction playthrough she got some additional dialogues like some additional content which is really cool as well basically if you do not do what i did in my playthrough and only interact with her once you became a member of the nine faction sect you can never recruit her then at some point you get like the evil doctor who joins the sect and he asks you to kill her and you can then choose once you are at the herbology sect and like fighting her you can choose to spare her then later in the buddha temple you can once more choose to spare her and promise her not to do like any unrighteous deeds which will then turn the evil doctor hostile towards you so you kill him and if you then hold like true to your saying and do not commit any evil acts which is used to all those pills you get on the people she will actually join you in your like will you join your team to help you out with different aspects as like a compromise and i love this idea of like her sacrificing herself to prevent you from doing evil deeds lovely next up tangwana where where may she be and why like let's be honest look for brave and fearless of course there she is tangwana like the art style i like even I don't even know what pet she has. Is it like a snow cup? Is it a cat? I don't know. Definitely devoted. There's like a whole blade, uh, like whole storyline with her and Beast Manor, which does bring some character development into the mix. One problem though is she never should be in the cat. Excuse me. She should never have been in the category brave and fearless. What is brave and fearless about her? Is it brave to break down and have an emotional scene while enemies attacking? Is it fearless to hide beside it's a tree while the main guy is fighting off the Jolie tribe? I don't know. Is it like brave and fearless not to face your inner feelings regarding the guy from Beast Manor who is called Lu Jian Nan? Is that like supposed to be uh, the symbolism or braveness embodied like you as the main character had to go up to her and be like yo tell this guy over there your true feelings don't leave him hanging and only then did she do it so uh, brave and fearless never fits now her storyline uh, it's definitely convoluted it's annoying to go through it if you just want to recruit her the one upside is you normally do the storylines for some other aspects as well like some uh, desert stuff to get the swordsman so it's at that point easier to recruit her then she obviously gets one amazing fate rate which is she shares half of your half of her luck with you there's even a an interesting build a chinese player came up with for the heaven tower which is abusing luck he's essentially like i think 82 luck which boosts his evasion chance and so on and he's just losing slumber and unconscious effects of enemies to then climb up the tower now obviously you could do the same thing with the wine strategy again 
people get the video, watch it, guys. Uh, but yeah, a cool idea that she shares starts with you. Now, if Fuching shared some like five strength with you, she'd be definitely intimate as well. Next up, some girl who, whose name got clipped. And by the way, uh, this whole tier list was from some Discord member. I don't know, rice cake? Something with rice he was called, that's for certain. Like on the Discord he has some other like rice name. Uh, committed genocide rice. That's him. I think. So thanks for this tier list. Um, Sakura. Yeah, friendly. Screw this storyline. It takes like... It, it feels like an hour just to get her storyline correct. Ah, it's so much. Do you first start in Dalyang, do the sightseeing everywhere, then head to the Jolly Tribe, promise her there, then go to the tea stall, then get all the different seals, then fight a battle, fight a battle, fight a battle, end up in the city, then end up back in linen, then suddenly your wives get kidnapped, so you gotta fight them off with her. Then you go back into that city. Oh my god. I can't handle that every run. As such, I don't even bother recruiting her anymore. Uh, her category, Hard Life, I guess it fits. After all, her story is like her father is somehow like imprisoned by her uncle, and the uncle is basically trying to force her to do certain stuff by saying the father asked her to do that and so she's committing like crimes against her own morals or her integrity later on we even see like in the dlc one she does have a backbone and asks uh, like you the main character to help remedy her mistake because she acknowledges it like i guess cool but screw this storyline absolutely horrendous I get it, they wanted some character development, but please don't make it this horrendous. Next up, one Yan Jonin. A princess, like very, I'd say, in the early stages, arrogant, haughty, like basically looking down on other people, until then the main character comes around and like does one palm slap and she f comes flying. I don't know the Chinese saying, but it's like flying like a kite with broken string, something like that. That's what it always reminds me of. Then she thinks like she can challenge the three religious sects with her like weak ass underlings. And then of course the main character teaches her another lesson. Like what did you think girl? Do you really think one of those like huge ass sects which has been standing there for a long long time can really be defeated by your random ass underlings. No. Then later on she obviously has this like coming around idea, especially in DLC 1 you realize it, how she realizes the actions or rather the consequences of her actions and wants to atone for it by becoming a Buddha and no longer caring about worldly affairs. So the fact that she does realize it does boost my opinion of her. It's just weird that she does so in the state of Chao, I think we're in. Like, why not go back to the Yan state, try to get involved in politics, try to change the P a world to like a better place, try to prevent wars, warfare, we don't know. She essentially like gave up on herself and was like, yo, I'll become a monk, or none. Next up, Yachin, Yachin the mute girl. It was really hilarious with her story before she got the update, because all you had to do was, you talk with her once, like a slight mini cutscene happens where you're knocked back, you talk with her again, a fight starts, you win that fight, you gift her some items, invite her to the party, head to the marriage shrine, and now you're bonded. 
That was the story at first. But later, obviously, they expanded on it and they gave a reasonable explanation as to why she's mute because she has like some internal injuries and that's affecting her speech organs, whatever it may be called. Something like clothes, I guess. And like you even learn how she was part of Melody House and is now trying to like remedy her mistake because she was supposed to guard the scripture tower. But on that one day it caught fire and then she ran away. So everyone is thinking she's involved. As such, she's tasked with finding that lost score again. So you have to go on like a whole treasure hunt just to find the Guangling Melody. Cool. Guangling Melody, of course, getting it every single run is annoying. You do have the steel slots for it. I'm quite certain this is also like a way to bypass the quest. And with my current setup, I'm only using four steel slots anyway. So you can just transfer it if you want. Now regarding her um, lore entry, she's part of the four arts, which does fit because she's like really good at playing that instrument, the silver. She's hot tempered and silent is what it says. Yeah, like I'd say close fits. Like she has this like mysterious aura where you want to get closer to her, I guess, and want to know more about her. But it's not like intimate enough. Next up, Yan Roy, number one money making girl. If once you want her, I'd say something like intimate. She was born into a noble family, then fell from grace, became a courtesan, I think is the correct word. Like it's not really like she does work in a brothel, but as her like law entry says, keep oneself pure. I guess she's like only involved in playing instruments and serving drinks, but we don't know. Maybe she's not. Maybe she's involved in flesh trade. Who knows? Now the law entry does claim she claims does say she claims to be old and faded, but still has peerless elegance. I can see it. It would be interesting to know how old she is, is exactly. Like I'd estimate maybe 30s, mid 30s. Ah, you know what? She's going to close. Too old for us. I think the, like old cow in eating tender grass is the Chinese saying that would fit it. Next up, Ye Jinping. Definitely either devoted or intimate. Cheerful girl going through the martial world trying to have her own adventure, like this could be a whole novel series or like a whole Don Hua uh, itself. Now she does have some backing with the Yi family battalion as well and like she does learn her spear techniques from it, which by the way brings up the question why did the son of the general never learn the spear techniques? Maybe he's not the actual son? Who knows? But like it's really cool you get to meet her early on even at the cross hill a cross hill event of course is a big plus then in the three cities you have different events with her and only once you help her like solve all three of them you can recruit her then it's also really cool like a really cool touch that if you betray the general in the trial and she's in your party she divorces you on the spot i'm like yes please that is some actual cool interactions. Like imagine if you are like spouse betrayed your father. That uh, I could feel the betrayal myself. Now she also has the trade capricious, which makes her damage fluctuate, which is not like the best. But on average, it does increase her damage. And once you complete her like additional storyline, which was added with one of the latest updates. She can use both spear and staff manuals without any restrictions and gains 20% more damage. That's good. That's really good. Okay, but now talking about the strides now, Yan Roy Roy, she does get the grand music skill, which is like 20% more dam like more music damage for the whole party. Goes to intimate as well. Now one issue of course now with Yi Yinping as well is 
If you go with the Yanyun route, she doesn't have the most pleasant of the endings. We've tried everything from like poisoning her to immobilizing her before that fight, but nothing can save her. Sadly. Next up, Casino Girl, Yi Jihua. Like Feng Xuanji, she does have like her own organization, the Black Rope Group. Now she does work under the Duke, like Duke Chi, which is how she got to accumulate such power, but really cool. Then of course gambling, best money source in the game for like most parts. Amazing. Her quest line is rather short, I'd say. You first have to level up to like level 50, then defeat her in a dice game, then you get the bad game. The bad game is just like one large gamble session where you can make a lot of money. That's it. And then afterward, you have to offend Duke Chi a bit. And like when I mean a bit, it's like minus one relation is enough. And that's it. You can bond her like rather simple. I like it. Definitely going to like intimate. Now she does sadly not have any like special traits that would have been cool if they expanded on it like I don't know she wants to now create the biggest casino in the world would have been cool. Uh, is there anything else about her? She is in Brave and Fearless I guess yeah she's like leading this whole like black rope group which is like an assassination organization. She's supposed to be a mysterious and ruthless character, fits brave and fearless, that's fine. Yuweya put her into known, I, I'm not fan, not a fan at all, a child. Like you can know the child, that's it. Her traits, uh, minus 35% damage, minus 50% spirit gain, so she's not suitable to be some, like any sort of damager. She's not suitable to use like fate moves often. Then she uses flute, which yeah, uh, there's not too much base stuff that's amazing. Of course, with DLC 2 and the top quality stuff, everything changes. You can run five people's palmas on every character. Not a fan. Now next up, obviously, do Yapo. What do Yapo? Do Yapo exactly. 10 out of 10. If you've seen the video where I take her to marriage, Ryan, you know why. Yes. Uh, Tang Tai Jun, S as well, immediately. She is already married, which is like, like rather her husband died and she's now a widow. Like that, that's a big plus already. Big, big plus. And yeah. You can take over like Beastman essentially with her, have some lovely cock fights with her black cock and you are uh, Sushen from the Nameless Village. I'd say it's good. Hua Xinyang, wow, she's like the last of the main girls. She is which category? The hermit in the Village, okay. She has excellent cooking skills, a fiery and flexible character. At least devoted, if not inseparable. Especially like in the early runs, uh, and what I mean by early runs is like my first, maybe f first five runs. Amazing fate rate she has. Every day recover 30 stamina and 20 mood. You can just meditate the whole time without worrying about your stamina. Then every 12 hours you get one piece of epic, so like purple food. So once you decide to not have her in the party anymore, you can use all the food up to keep your stamina up high. Amazing. Now she did get some like additional storyline, but like back in the days, like long, long time ago, where you had to the Duke Mansion and you learn that her like husband is like like her ex husband is working in the Duke Manor, and she's trying to take revenge on him. That's cool. And there's also some like gimmicks in the game 
where if you meet her for the first time and you're like the pri uh, room price is too expensive at 200 coin i want to stay for free a battle starts if you lose the battle she will raise the price permanently to 500 coins like a slight neat gimmick now as king rebel also mentioned on the discord discord her dowry is now cheaper for some reason i guess it lost value over time inflation hit too hard but nonetheless s tier like getting early on especially if you invite her you can just rest in the end in for free nice it once you bond her fate trade amazing hell yeah then we have feng shi which i have to look up the actual name feng chi Tsi. Chi Tsi. i see a guy it's a guy now let's look over the tier list again I can perfectly live with like inseparable so the S rank. Devoted Han Hong Yu Tangwana, yeah yeah, I can live with that. Yeah, to be honest, this looks good to me. This is a purely objective tier list as requested. Okay, I do notice that the merchant thing daughter is missing. But since she's not in the law, well, obviously we'll uh, exclude her. And, well, since she does give us an STD, we don't like that here. Now, if you enjoyed the tier list and my thoughts, share, like, subscribe. See you next time.